everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Let's Talk About It. And we've got some great things that we want to talk to you about today. And so I am so glad that you have tuned in. Once again, Danny Hunt is here with me, and I am excited that he's here. <laughs> I often just smile at him one because more <laughs> one more time, you're right, one more time. And so, Danny, thank you so much for coming on the set with me again today. We've got some things we want to talk about. Yeah. So, do want to get after it? <laughs> Let's get after it. <laughs> Let's get after it. All right. First of all, I want to let you know something great that's coming up in the community. On March the 26th, the Northeast Delta Human Service Authority Faith Partnership, in Partnership Initiative is going to be taking place on March the 26th at the West Monroe Convention Center. You do not want to miss it. Go online and register with the Northeast Delta Human Service Authority so that we will know that you're going to be there. Lunch is going to be served. Uh, registration and continental breakfast will start at 8 o'clock. And at 9 o'clock, of course, we would we'll get started with everything. You do not want to miss this. Our morning keynote speaker is Dr. Matthew S. Stanford of Hoping Healing Center and Institute. Uh, there's so much going to be taking place the whole day. Uh, you, uh, you're going to have your keynote speaker, your midday keynote speaker, Reverend Dr. Montag Sizer of the Northeast Delta Human Services Authority. And I want to give you this statement that he made because I always love to quote it. It says, government cannot solve complex societal problems alone. Thus, we are calling on houses of faith to join with us as we seek to battle mental illness and addiction. When evidence-based treatment is combined with our faith, our region's people will gain a greater sense of purpose, belonging, and hope, says Dr. Sizer. And I fully agree with that. We are calling on churches to partnership with us to help to combat all of the addiction, the opioid addiction and uh, alcohol uh, addiction and all the other addictions that our communities are faced with. Uh, so you do not want to miss this uh, uh, conference uh, uh, it's faith addiction and trauma healing our communities and the afternoon speaker after lunch we we'll, they're going to serve lunch and after lunch uh, Bishop they're going to have Bishop Joseph Walker of the Mount Zion Baptist Church from Nashville Tennessee is going to be the keynote speaker in the afternoon right after lunch so we're calling all the pastors, all the churches, all the lay persons that need to come to this summit and get this information so that we can take it back to our churches and empower our churches to be able to help to deal with the addictions. You never know there'll be a person sitting right next to you, right there in your church that is suffering from a problem of addiction, opioid addiction or alcohol or something like that. And they need this information. So pastors, send someone from your church. You come yourself and get this information. I know that you have heard before Bishop Walker of the Mount Zion Baptist Church from uh, Nashville, Tennessee is going to be the keynote speaker. And we're looking for you to be there to uh, gain this information and to partnership with the Northeast Delta Human Services Authority so that we can become a great mighty force in the community and in our churches to help to combat this problem of addiction. Wow. Now you brought that up. Now how they go about uh, getting signed up? Because in my mind, I'm thinking uh, Bishop Walker's coming who's over the full gospel convention. So it's a lot of people. Uh, so everybody in the area that knows about him is going to surely want to come and, and hear what he has to say. And the fact that the bishop is going to come down here and talk about mental illness helps us to understand that it is prevalent in our churches. And we can no longer just turn a, a deaf ear, a blind eye to it. we got to face this challenge uh, head on so we can combat it and be successful, not just for ourselves, but our communities and people uh, around life. So, uh, so how do they go about getting signed up for this event? All you have to do is go there online to the Northeast Delta Human Services Authority, and, and you'll find it right there, the Northeast Delta Human Service Authority Faith Partnership Initiative for March the 26th. Just go online and, and register. Uh, and like I said, there is no charge for the summit. Uh, they're looking for you to be there. We're looking for you to be there and come out and support what's taking place because while addressing the problem will be complex, we're believing and hoping that this event will be a catalyst for finding solutions to this widespread public health issue. So we encourage you to be a part of the solution as we move forward with future initiatives. 
including our Faith Partnership Initiative for those congregations here in Northeast Louisiana. So go ahead, go online, and register with the Northeast Delta Human Services Authority and come and be a part. And once again, that's March 26th at the West Monroe Convention Center. March 26th, West Monroe Convention Center. And we're looking for you to be there. Absolutely. www.northeastdeltanedhsa.org. And uh, I suggest you do it pretty early because this is probably going to fill up and be a fantastic yes. event. All right, now let's get after it. All right, let's get after our topic for today. <laughs> okay, you talked about as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Explain that's, to us what you're talking about. That's, that's, that's probably one of my favorite uh, scriptures to, to teach on, to preach on, to talk about, to think about. Because the thought process is not anything that's just a benign subject. Every day you go through a complex situation of many, many, many thoughts that bombard your entire environment and your entire life. And if we don't give credence to it, if we don't give authority to it, then we'll allow the wrong thoughts that we can't have to take over our life. God gave every good and pure thought for us to utilize our talents. Well, sometimes we take these, these, these thoughts and we, we trigger them in the wrong direction. Uh, then Satan does what he does. He sends evil thoughts. He sends bad communication. Sometimes people that we don't need to be talking to, sometimes we talk to them and we listen to them. And so all of a sudden we can allow the good thoughts that we have about ourselves, our neighbors, our community, our state, and our nation to become uh, trashed out, if you will. So today let's talk about how we can avoid some of the negative things in our lives and how to impact our lives with thoughtful, with good thoughts that God intended for us to have and maintain. Yeah, because, you know, the Bible tells us that everything begins in our mind with a thought. Mm -hmm. And that's why Paul himself addressed it. And he told us that we are to think on things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of good report. And if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And it's because of what you just said. Everything starts with a thought. And if I sit around all day long and I think negative thoughts, then I'm going to have what I'm thinking about. Absolutely. Uh, the, the thought process has an anatomy about it. That is, is what it's comprised of, what it's made up of, what you're allowed to come in. It will form a, a body, if you will that will rest itself in your will. That's your thought process, your emotions, and how you think, how you perceive things. Then we move into the, the cognitive side. What happens is we learn about what we see, what we hear, what we read. We collect all this information. And this goes into our subconscious mind. And the subconscious mind, it processes what we give it to work with. And so if I give my subconscious mind nothing but negative attitudes and negative traits and negative behaviors, then my subconsciousness will begin to operate on that aspect. In other words, I won't think good of myself. I won't think good of my family. I won't think good about anything. And when we move into this point, it, it becomes a dangerous process. In fact, it could also have an effect on mental illness. So I think these two subjects tie very well together on the thought process and how we think about what we're thinking about. So stop right now and ask yourself, what am I thinking about? See, somebody's thinking about, what am I going to eat next? And you're saying, I'm going to get me a pork chop. But the doctor told you, get off pork chop because your blood pressure is high. Somebody's saying, oh, a good old cigarette would be real good right now. But you got emphysema. You know you don't need to, to smoke. So why would you even give time to think about things that are going to harm your health? And I may be getting a little rough on you, but guess what? Sometimes we need to be gotten rough on to help us live. Well, the question is for you right now, when was the last time you stopped to think about what you're thinking about? One of my favorite scriptures in the Word of God is Romans 12, 1 and 2. Paul said, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you could prove what is that good and that perfect and acceptable will of God. You have to get your mind transformed to the Word of God and begin to think the right thoughts, because as he said, if you're thinking negative thoughts, whatever it is you're thinking about, then that's what you're going to have. And so we have to go through a, a transformation. We have to change the way we think about things that are causing negative things to come in our life. You know what I do, Danny, if I catch myself, and the Bible tells us, that if I catch myself thinking something negative, and guess what? The mind will wander off. 
Absolutely. on something negative. And when I catch myself thinking about something negative, the first thing I do is I capture that thought. Mm -hmm. And I take authority over it. And I immediately say, Satan, you will not take me there. I will not think that. Because I understand that if I think on it long enough, I'll act on it. What you begin to think on, you begin to act on it. So in order to keep my mind and to keep me in the right path and right direction, I have to take authority over the thoughts that come into my mind because guess what? I'm just like you. I can think some stuff, and let me tell you, when I get rid of thinking, I'm like, next thing I know, I'm acting it out. So you have <laughs> to be sure that you take authority over your thought process and that word, get your mind transformed by the word of God, and that word transform means metamorphosis. You got to be like, like a butterfly. You got to go through metamorphosis. You know, when we got saved, that old word, that, that, the, the, the soul, the spirit man got saved. But that old man, it remained the same. So now your mind has got to go through metamorphosis, a process to change the way you think. And let me tell you something. You can have what you say because once you started thinking it, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And so when you start thinking on it, you're going to start saying it. And when you start saying it, oh, you done put that ball in. That you, it's, it's an action now. It's, it begins to process. And so we have to be careful about what we're thinking about. Wow. Let me read this subject here. Thoughts are basically electrical impulses, chemicals, and neurons. Thoughts can be measured. They can affect every area of our lives. They influence every decision, word, action, and physical reaction we make. Thoughts can be positive or negative, and it matters a great deal which type we choose to entertain. That's why you talk about what Paul said, finally, brethren. You know, sometimes you got to come to a point where you understand I've been thinking the wrong thing. The Bible says, finally, brethren, think on good things, pure and virtue. And that becomes a task sometimes because so much around you is negative. Some people you get around that everything they talk about goes the other direction. But why does God want us to think on positive thoughts, to lead good lives, better lives? And I love how you put that. Yeah, I mean, because, you know, you can think on something the next thing you know. And then you know what else? I'm going to be honest with you. Some of them negative thoughts we think on, we like them. We like thinking what we're thinking about. Why? Because certain thoughts make you feel good. Certain thoughts make you feel good about yourself and about things going on around you. So that negative thought is a negative thought. And no, you shouldn't be thinking it, but it makes you feel a certain way. That's why your mind has to be transformed. It has to go through metamorphosis by the word of God. If you just tuned in, we're talking about our thought process. As a man thinketh in his heart, heart meaning the soul of your, of your, your mind. The way as your man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You become what you think about. Oh, yes, you do. And so we have to take our mind through metamorphosis. You know, when that caterpillar spins in that cocoon and later breaks out of the cocoon as a butterfly, the caterpillar completely changes its shape, it changes its coloring, and it changes its function. So when you change your thought process, you'll change your life. If you want to change your life, change your thought process. If you want to change what you're doing, change the way you're thinking because it has a powerful effect upon you what you will accomplish in life and what you will not accomplish in life. And it all goes back to your thought process. So we have to think the right thoughts. I like that analogy um, about the caterpillar becoming a butterfly. As you were speaking, uh, I thought about some people that I have known that were real negative and just they found fault with everything. It doesn't matter what came up. They found something wrong with it. But then they, they started to come to church and they began to hear the word of God. And then that word of God, it was tell them how good they were in the eyes of God, how they were righteous because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And I watched these people slowly change and they began to understand. And I thought about, about, about that, 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 that caterpillar going to the butterfly. These people changed. They became uh, more happy. They were happier to talk to. You know, some people you go, you don't want to talk to them because they bring you down. Well, I watched these folks change. All of a sudden now, they always have something good to say. They're delightful. They're cheery. They're smiling a lot. And to me, that went from a negative attitude, thinking bad thoughts, to a good attitude, producing good thoughts, and it made their whole physical nature change, their whole mindset change. And it made them become people that you want to be around. You know, 
uh, some people attract other people because they're just so nice, so friendly, always got a good word, always got a good pat on the back. And uh, I think that I like that. that yeah, that so, so once again, your thought process has a lot to do with where you are in life. It has a lot to do with where you go. It has a lot to do with your position. Why? Because as you think it in your heart, so are you. You become what you think about. So one of the things that I tell a lot of persons is, you know, if you're getting results that you don't want, it's time to renovate. Reno yeah, it's time to renovate your mind. What do I mean by renovate? You know, when you, we watch, I watch HGTV all the time. She does. And, and Yes, I do. And I love the way they go in these old houses and they began to renovate and they said, the kitchen looks great, but we're going to renovate it. We're going to tear everything out. And they began to tear everything out and tear the ceiling out and tear the walls out and tear the kitchen out. And they renovate that old house. So sometimes we have to go in and renovate our mind, renovate our thought process, taking out the old files and putting in some new stuff. That's what he means by being transformed by the renewing of your mind, taking out the old junk, putting in the word of God, putting in some good stuff. Instead of talking to people that talk negative all the time, talk to somebody that talks positive. Instead of reading something that does not add any value to you, read something that adds value. Instead of watching a television program that adds no value to you and that's not adding to your thought process, I have certain things on TV I just won't watch. Know why? It adds no value to my thought process. And if it's not adding value to my thought process, then guess what? I don't need to, to listen to it. Why? Because I have to guard my ear gates and guard my eye gate because this is where stuff comes in, what I'm seeing. This is what stuff comes in, where I'm hearing. And it comes into my mind, into my heart. And then I began to think on it. And as I think on these things, then I began to act on those things. Why? Because as those words go in or those pictures go into our eyes, then they began to form. It's like a seed that go into the ground. It begins to conceive. And when it gets conceived down inside of our spirit, then we begin to live out of it. So when you watch certain things on TV, you're feeding your mind. When you talk to certain people, you're feeding your mind. And now guess what? Don't be surprised if all of a sudden you look up and, oops, there it is. It comes out. <laughs> yeah, you begin to do what you've been seeing, huh? Absolutely. So I don't watch certain things. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you sometimes, you know, I'm like, oh, no, I can't watch that. I, if you tell you if something is bad on TV or, or anything, I cover my head. I go and I say, oh, I can't watch that. <laughs> Why? That's what true. am I doing? I am guarding my heart so that that evil will not even come in. I don't even want to think any evil thoughts. Why? Because if I think on evil then somehow it could take root in my spirit, Danny, just like that flower, that rose seed that you plant. All of a sudden, it, you look up and there's a rose. How, you figure out, oh, I didn't plant it. Oh, yes, you did. You planted it because you were watching it and you were listening to it, and that seed went in. So we have to guard our mind because out of it are what? The issues of life. We have Those to guard issues, what we're thinking about. Yeah, guard what we're thinking about. That's a pretty Amen. profound statement. Uh, because what you think, what you see, what you feel will actually produce your world. You will frame your world based upon the thoughts that you have. If you think evil, you produce evil. If you think good, you produce good. If you think love and happiness, then you produce love and happiness. Whatever it is that you focus on and concentrate on, your subconscious mind and your spirit will bring that to pass. That's the power that God placed within us. Sometimes we just don't understand the awesome power that God placed inside of us to make things happen. It was no accident that God brought all the animals to Adam and said, whatever you call them, that's what they're going to be. Adam did not have a Ph.D. from Harvard or Yale or from ULM. God has placed wisdom, knowledge, and understanding inside of each one of us. But we must dig inside of ourselves with the proper thought process and the Word of God to open up that abundance of wealth of knowledge that he's already given to us. And how do we do that? By controlling our thought process and acting accordingly from all the good things that we have. And by renewing our mind, because our mind is where the thought process is, and renewing your mind is not a one-time event. It is a daily, continual process. I have to renew my mind every day. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Satan is busy trying to combat our minds and our thought process with old negative things, try to bring up and, and cause strongholds to come in that you know they've been dug up, 
roots that have been dug up. Once again, he try to bring those thoughts back to mind. So you have to be sure that you are aware of what you're thinking about. That's why I ask you the question, when was the last time you stopped to think about what you're thinking about? Because I know for a fact that if you just let your mind hang loose, then guess what? Your mind will do just that, hang loose. That's why we have to gird up the loins of our mind and not just let our minds hang loose and think about anything because those things would take root. And the next thing you know, we will begin to live out of what we're thinking about. But now listen to this. Our spirit and our mind tell our body what to feel, say, and do. I'm going to say that again. Our spirit and our mind tells our body how it should feel, or what it should say, and what it should do. So what is your mind telling your body to do? What is your mind telling you to say? Where is your mind telling you to go? And if we allow our mind, which sometimes may not be transformed, and our thinking may not be renovated like it needs to be, then instead of our spirit man controlling us, our mind will control us. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to be uh, uh, natural-minded. We want to be spiritual-minded. In other words, having a mind that is renewed by Christ, a mind that's renewed by the Word of God. And so that's what I think that a lot of times that happens with with individuals is that they haven't renovated their mind. Still got those old thought processes. Well, I remember what used to be. I remember what happened to me. I remember what I went through. You know, we've got to, you know, renovate our, it's like a computer. Yeah. We got to, what you do? You, you, with those old files, we delete those old files. Delete the old files. And we need to delete some old files out of our thought process. And, And we have to be careful. Uh, like in the reprogramming process, the the human mind is open to suggestive ideas. Uh, what I mean by that is she talked about going back thinking about the old thoughts. Uh, everybody has some old things that you did and you that that you that you, you know, you're not too proud of, but you got to learn to delete those and discard those thoughts. Why? Because if you internalize those, if you focus on those, then those things will cause stress. And that stress will aggravate you. So you got to learn to forget the things that are the past. Then you got to learn, first of all, to forgive yourself for whatever happened in the past. So many people spend so much time reminding themselves of what they did wrong or what wrong happened to them that it holds them back and it stops them from going forward. So they, 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 they cut their good thought process short because they internalize things that happened to them a long time ago. You know, and it brings me also, Dan, to one of my favorite scriptures. You know, I've got quite a few that are my favorite. But this is one of my favorite. Evil communication corrupts good behavior. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? If I talk to you and you are speaking evil things or things that are not healthy, wholesome, or good for my life, if I continue to speak with you, what you're thinking can corrupt my behavior. Right. I'll begin to see some of what you were thinking take place in my life. Why? Because I've been communicating with you. I tell people all the time, be careful who you're allowing to talk to you. Be careful who's in your ear. Be careful who you're socializing with. When we're teaching the teens, we tell the teens that same thing. Watch what group you hang out with. Watch who you're holding conversation with. Watch who's planting seeds into your thought process. Why? Because those seeds will come up. Evil communication will corrupt good behavior. I've seen good people Mm -hmm. that were never in trouble, never had a problem. All of a sudden now you look and you say, what's wrong with him? He's changed. He's changed from what he used to be. All of a sudden now, evil communication, seeds have been planted in, Mm -hmm. and now his thought process has changed. And he's beginning to think those thoughts. Another example of it. You don't know nothing about that person. But all of a sudden, this person, I don't like him. I I don't like him. Well, why you don't like him? I just don't like him, you know, and begin to talk. Next thing you know, you don't don't like the person. You don't know anything about him. That's the same person you don't even know. Absolutely. Never had a conversation with him. But because person A doesn't like him, now you decide, well, I don't like him either. Why? That's wrong. Because you allowed the communication to come in and plant a seed in your mind And once that seed was planted in your mind, now it brings forth. Mm -hmm. It brings forth what you heard. That's why evil communication can corrupt good behavior. So we have to think about, who am I talking to? Think about, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Think about, 
What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about what that person just said to you? Are you thinking about what you heard? Even are you thinking about what you heard on television? So if you right now you're listening to some good stuff because we're helping <laughs> right. you right now to, to change your thought process because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. But you can sit and listen to the wrong stuff on television and all mm -hmm. of a sudden your behavior has changed. Why? You allowed someone else's perspective, someone else's thought process to plant a seed into your mind and now you're thinking it and now you're acting it out. Remember, every behavior starts with a thought. Right. I suggest to you that by your watching this broadcast, that you're going to get more attention to what you're thinking about. You're going to denounce evil communication and corrupt behavior. You're going to talk to people who have a positive influence on your life. You're going to talk to people who speak for good things into your life. I suggest to you that as you take this path of change, you become a better person not just for everybody else, but to yourself. Sometimes we don't take care of ourselves, and they were talking about heart health, uh, both physical and, uh, and spiritual. If we go down this path and we learn to love like God says we're to love, we will naturally become better people. Why? Because we'll want to do good things. And I suggest this to you, that as you make this change for yourself, watch your life change for the better, Watch more people come around you for the good reason. Watch more people help you without you even having to ask why. This is the will of God for your life. We're talking about today, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And as Paul has told us, we've got to think on the right things. And if we think on the right things, we'll get right results because our thinking process affects what we do, who we are, where we go, and what we will be. And that's why Paul tells us, to be not conformed to this world, that's the world's way of doing things, but be ye transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can prove what is that good and that perfect and acceptable will of God. He tells us to think on the right things, to go through the metamorphosis mm -hmm. process and think on things that will bring you good, think on things that will help you, think on things that will encourage you. Many people are depressed and down because they're thinking on wrong thoughts. So change the way you're thinking and watch what it'll do. It'll change your life. You want to change what's going on in your life? Change the way you think. Your thinking process will change where you go. Change what you're thinking, and I guarantee you that things around you will change. God bless you. Dan and I'll see you next time right here on Let's Talk About It.